Um, but uh, all the credit in the world goes to Indiana. Um, they were, they were, um, they're really good. They looked like a team that had five days off and prepared for us. Um, we looked like a team who had been 19 straight days without a day off. And um, you can't miss 14 free throws. You can't miss 13 layups and, uh, and be a good team. And, and especially one that has uh, arguably one of the best players in the country. Uh, a lot of lessons to be learned in this one. We weren't very uh, assignment sound uh, on the defensive side. Um, they bothered us. Nobody's bothered us. Running offense, and I, we just again, I'm not going to make make excuses. They were tougher. They were better. They deserve all the credit. Question: Thirty-five for Trace Jackson Davis, fifty-four points uh, in the paint. Uh, from Indiana. Was, was there a discussion about changing anything defensively the way you were, you were uh, covering him in the post? I don't, I'm not worried about his 35. I'm worried about his, I'm worried about Geronimo's 13 when he's averaging five. Um, yeah, I mean, Dane guarded him pretty good for about three possessions. And uh, then we just lay behind him. And, you know, we, 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 we've got a double package. We actually tried it. It doesn't show that, but we tried it, and uh, uh, it didn't matter tonight. The guys, I'm just telling you, it was an off night. And mentally, we were fatigued, and physically, we were worse. And Matt's sick, so that doesn't help either. Okay. <clears throat> Brad, obviously, Dean hasn't gone against this caliber, but there's a couple more in the Big Ten that play like this. What can you learn from this experience? Well, they're different. Yeah. This one's slippery. This one's a freak athlete. This one's the best athlete in our league and at any position. And you know, that's the way Dane needs to play. Dane's like that. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, you let, you let a really good player catch and um, catch in his spots, and, and he's, he's a problem. But uh, you know, we hold him to three threes. But it, it's, it's all the, you know, the first half, second chance points. We knew what Geronimo and, you know, Renault and those, I mean, it, it was just, wasn't there today, guys. It wasn't there. John? Okay, seven assists. We, we've just seen you guys move the ball more than that, I guess, in the last, during this win streak. And uh, what do you think was behind that? And then just two guys in double figures, which is also a little abnormal. Yeah, it's all, all what you said. I, what was behind it, I guess, their <laughs> defense and our, just our lack of mental want to. I mean, it's, it's, we knew that they were going to pressure us, and you know, spread is unbelievable against pressure, and you got dribble entries and high post entries, and and we just we fight very hard. And uh, again, we look like a team that was not in the gym tonight. That's on me. Right. Um, I know it's not the outcome you wanted, but talk about the rivalry as a coach. I mean, what's it mean to coach in this type of an atmosphere? what college basketball is about. Illinois, Indiana, I don't know, KUK State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, you take it, you go right on down the list. Uh, every school's got them. Um, this just happens to be one that has the most outstanding high school basketball, uh, youth basketball in the country in those two states. So people grow up with it. And uh, I have tremendous appreciation for that. And, uh, and obviously you got two historic programs that uh, uh, have had a lot of success on the hardwoods. Eric, Michigan State had 28 points in the paint first half, Indiana tonight 30 first half, 54 in the game. Any parallels between the two? Or anything that you're seeing where you're not getting? Who won the Michigan State game? You guys did. Okay. So you're going to give up something. You want to give up threes, you want to give up twos. Same defense we played last year. Same defense we played last year. We didn't give up threes and, and same same time last year, we were thirteen and five, just like we were going into this game. Uh, we, what we didn't have is nineteen straight days, and I'm not going to make a mountain out of a molehill. They were great. They were great. They deserved to win the game. They whooped our butt in every category. Uh, but yeah, are there lessons to learn out of this? Absolutely. Free throw shooting hasn't been maybe a major strength this year, but I mean, tonight, like 40, whatever it was.
those percentages? I mean, I don't know. Is there a way you can address that? Or is it's it? It's mental fatigue. We shoot them every day. It's mental fatigue. You can go back any year you want to, any year you want to look, and I'll tell you, every game where we were flat mentally, and y'all look at our free throw shooting, and because that's your, your ability to concentrate and be focused and dialed in. And we had chances to keep it close early. We missed free throws, we missed layups. And, you know, it doesn't matter what offense you run, but you get a layup and you miss it. And then, or you get fouled and you miss free throws. Uh, you know, that's, that to me, it's, it, that's a mental toughness deal that, yeah, we gotta get better at. Andy. Yeah, with the 19th straight days, now you have a little bit more time to clean. What's kind of the approach there? When well, now, now the NCAA makes you take two days off because you go so many in a row. So now we, we can't touch a basketball, we can't be in the gym, we can't be with our guys for two straight days. So we have those two uh, coming up on Friday and Saturday, and then it's back to game prep mode. Uh, and again, this year's calendar is all messed up. It's shorter calendar, so we've got games crammed in there, but 19, ga 19 days in a row is a lot. Just to clarify, Brian, on that, did you show up tonight knowing if you were going to have him tonight, or was it kind of touch and go? He said he was going to try to go. So he tried. Yeah. I mean, just again, it's as long as you have another one of these stretches like this. But I mean, going through this, I mean, does that make you reevaluate maybe how you treat the uh, maybe a 19 straight day stretch in the future? Oh, I mean, I we we done very little on the day after games, um, more mental approaches, but, um, you know, and then, and then we tried to prepare a little bit. Our practices have been a lot shorter. Uh, I, you know, I don't know, maybe I go back to my three hour practices and just grind them and get them tough and I don't know, but no, we, we can't do that. It's, um, it, you know, it is what it is. You know, when you play every night of the week and you got to get 20 games in, it's, 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 it's what it is. And I'm not trying to make this an excuse. I'm, 19 days is a lot. It's probably the longest I've ever been in my career uh, without having at least one day off in there. Uh, and I don't want to take anything away from Indiana guys. They whooped our butt. And, uh, but we were due for one. I know, I know you want to defend without fouling, but if you look, look at the foul totals, no fouls on Coleman Hopkins, no fouls on Meyer. Just, do you want them to be more aggressive and use up a few fouls? Or? No, fouling is a defensive mistake. Doesn't have anything to do with, a, with the, those two guys are really smart. They're usually in the right position. And guys that foul are usually the ones in the wrong position. Uh, you know, and, and again, it's guys like Trace are really hard. Okay, the NBA has a five second rule, back end rule. Okay, we don't have that in college. So you could take you could take a guy with the ball and back him in for twenty seconds and you can't defend him because you can't touch him until he gets inside the little hash outside the lane. So positioning is really important. I don't know how you guard some of that with you know, I mean our you watch our league, all our league is post players. It doesn't matter if they're six two or they're seven foot, they're just backing their way into the post up because there's you know, I asked the officials tonight, how do you guard it? Just slam bodies and slam bodies. I don't know how you guard it. So, yeah, I guess double, triple, quadruple, I don't know. Until you figure out how to guard it, because you can't put a forum on it. I know yesterday you said the scheduling is unavoidable this calendar year, but is that something that needs to be looked at moving forward, be it find a way to make these not so, uh, not normal, but like. I, that's way above my head. I mean, I think we've, that's why we play two games in December. But we need to try to, you know, I mean, the first semester, in my, in my opinion, the season should start November 1. This November 6th, 8th, 9th, why not just start at November 1, built in an extra week so we can play league games earlier. Um, but uh, that's way above my, my pay grade. I'm not here to get into all that right now. <laughs> oh, Joe, I'm sorry. Right, sorry to follow this up. I want to understand it a little bit more. 35 points, you say you don't mind that. On 19 field goal attempts, can you just explain that a little bit more? His 35 didn't beat us. He wasn't beating us by himself. You add what he, you add his uh, uh, five assists, okay? Those are what those are what hurt you, okay? I mean, and, and then we didn't give him any, try not to give him any threes. I mean, it's no different than we played, you know, we played last year. 
Um, now his touches got, were way too easy. And sure, do you have to run at him some? Yeah, to throw him a different bone, and, and we actually tried. But again, twos, it's very, very hard to score enough twos to beat you in a college game. And our problems were on the offensive side, because if we make any free throws and any layups, 35's not gonna outdo you. And uh, nobody else was really involved. Anything else? All right, thank, thank you. you.